G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and this is the fifth and final episode in our five part series on growing food in small spaces. If you haven't seen those other videos, make sure you go back and check them out in the description below, and there's also a link up here. In this video, I want to take you through my journey into self sufficiency three important points in my life that I've worked out has really influenced my passion for self-sufficiency. The three main areas were my grandparents, my military career, and becoming a home dad. Let's get into it. I think my initial major influence was my grandparents. My grandfather is the person I really looked to, and my grandmother as well. He was an ex-World War II vet, for the Japanese up in New Guinea. And I just always was under his sort of wing. He'd take me fishing. I'd also go to the farm of my old uncle Ernie. I was just drawn to it right from the beginning. I was so obsessed that I would ride my bike from Toowoomba all the way to Crow's Nest. It'd be about a 34 or so kilometre ride. I'd do that in a day, get there, stay a week, and then ride back home. It's just something I love doing. Going out to the dairy farm, getting my hands dirty, playing with the animals, eating off the land, you know, taught me a whole lot of skills. And then I just had that feeling that I wanted to be as self-sufficient as I could. And I guess that's why I was sort of drawn to the army. I was interested in survival, and survival techniques. So that's why I chose a military career over anything else. I got issued this entrenching tool in 1987 and I used it in the garden all the time. So my military career gave me this, but it was a much bigger influence than that. Of course, I went on operations. My first major operation was in the Sahara Desert and that was huge for me. There were some really interesting experiences there because we'd often have to eat the local food and practically live off the land. And it always amazed me how well they could do with such minimal produce. They'd grow all their own herbs and spices and they'd need a lot of that because a lot of the proteins, goat and camel, weren't, weren't really good, but they'd make it taste really great and flavorful. After that, I went on a couple of tours to East Timor, again, the same type of role, trying to keep the peace there. And then we ate the Asian style dishes, the heaps of chili, heaps of greens, and uh, local people cooking up cuisine. They didn't have a lot, they were poor, but they were happy to give us what they could. And I was always surprised on the taste of it. I remember one day we had a meal at a church, even if it was such a commemorative site, they gave us a banquet. It was really humble, but the flavor was amazing. And there was this little side dish of Thai chili. And uh, I asked the, the lady, what is that? And uh, she pointed to a chili bush, little chili bush, and showed me some vinegar, showed me some salt. And that's all it was. Vinegar, chili chopped finely, and some salt. Add that to the bit of chicken that we had there, and it just tasted magnificent. Those meals influenced me quite a bit. Not just the frugal nature of it, but just uh, how people will survive in all these types of situations and utilize what they have around them and make the best of it. So yeah, that was a huge influence, the military career. And as I was going towards the end of my military career, speaking of the small spaces thing, we were living in army married quarters and small houses and Nina and I, I said one day, why don't we make use of this? We had a metre by metre courtyard and the sun would just come through about six hours a day. I said, we're doing nothing with that. There's a dead plant in there. Maybe we could grow some herbs in there. And I thought, well, it can't be that hard. So I dug it all up. We put some herbs and some carrots in there and it really thrived. And uh, that got me thinking, you know, I wouldn't mind moving to a bigger property and then we could expand and an empire build on that. But at the end of the day, it wasn't my injuries that ended my military career. In fact, my military career was going really well, and so was my wife's. We were both senior positions. I was a squadron sergeant major. What really stonked my military career was our children. So one day we had our kids in the car, we we're at the front gate and it was dark and we we're off to work, off to childcare. And we looked at each other, Nina and I, and I said, look, this just can't keep going on. Who wants to stay at home? 
And Nina said, not me. I want to continue on working. Uh, I don't want to be a, a home mum. And I said, well, I'll give it a go. In the end, it really worked out for the best because I'm doing what I love doing. I'm working the land and I was able to look after my children through those younger years. They're teens now. They don't need me as much. They need me in different ways as kids do as they grow. But uh, yeah, I think it was critical, critical for my relationship with my wife and also my relationship with my children. The trade-off was though, I wasn't earning any money, not as much anyway. So what we thought we'd do was utilize the property that we had set up. Now it wasn't a mistake. Of course, like I said earlier, I've worked myself way to this position. And the whole idea was if we needed to drop out of the workforce, at least we'd supplement our bills. Primarily the biggest bill is usually your grocery bill. And so that's what I did. Grew as much produce as possible and it worked. Nina was able to work, she works hard, and I did my best to hold up my side by looking after the children, making her life easier. She didn't have to think about the home front, and I could then concentrate on growing as much food as possible in my spare time. And not only was that saving money, but over time it developed into a healthier way of life, and the children loved it, and they loved their veggies, and they're always interested in food. So there was a lot of trade-offs uh, that came with that decision for me to drop out and continue on with my passion of self-sufficiency. So those were my three major influences of why I got into self-sufficiency. My grandparents, my military career, and of course, being a home dad, my children. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. This was the last final video in our five part series on growing food in small spaces. I hope you enjoyed the series. If you haven't seen it yet, go back and watch it. There's links below and links up there. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.